Advanced marine propulsion. Is it really advanced? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect, and today I'm going to be reacting to a video that highlights some advanced marine propulsion systems. As always, the purpose is not to criticize these videos, but to show the technical perspective and technical reactions to what is usually a vendor sales pitch. So let's get into this and see what we can discover. First runner-up, we have wind-assisted propulsion. Wind-assisted propulsion is a concept that's been going around quite a bit recently in the last few years. We're really trying to reduce fossil fuel emissions from our vessels. It's very important to understand this is wind assisted. We do not want to go back to the days of pure sail propulsion because that introduces a very large lack of control, a very large dependence upon the wind conditions, which are not always reliable. With the size of the vessels that we have, it's too much of a risk to just hope that the wind will happen. We need to always ensure that there is an engine in there to give us power and control when we need it. That being said, a lot of the times the winds are very favorable to where that engine could be running at a fraction of its current power. How much of a reduction? That depends on who you ask. So one really impressive fact that's happening with all the wind assisted propulsion is we are not using conventional sails in most of these concepts. Uh, conventional sail is a single piece of cloth, and from what we know about aerodynamics, it actually forms a very bad wing-shaped section, uh, which is all that sails are. Wind-assisted propulsion, they are wings turned vertical, and so all of the focus for wind-assisted propulsion has been on creating these new dynamic 3D-shaped sails so that are full wing-shaped sections. And so you can see in this case, they achieved that with a combination of a telescoping mast and then inflating air into the sail to hold its shape. So this is one factor I disagree with on wind-assisted propulsion. The companies that are developing these concepts seem convinced that vessel crew are not willing to change their operating procedure. And so wind-assisted propulsion is supposed to happen completely autonomously. There is a computer that magically takes care of everything. I don't really see that as being practically realistic. I have sailed on traditional sailing vessels and on modern yachts. And I can tell you that having even a mast and a sail, that drastically alters the way that you control your vessel. It's reasonable to expect that modern crews are absolutely going to change their procedures to account for wind-assisted propulsion. We will probably still have a computer fine-tuning and controlling a lot of the sail settings, but it's going too far to say that the crew won't even notice the sail there. They'll definitely have to adjust their procedures and consider how to control the vessel working with the wind rather than against it. They breeze right past something there that's very important. You can retract the sail quickly in bad weather conditions. 
This is one of the most important features of any sail propulsion that often gets overlooked. The size of the sail is generally picked for the lightest wind conditions. As wind speeds increase, you need a way to decrease the sail area so that you can still maintain the same level of control on your boat without the sail overpowering you and driving you off course. So one critical feature to look for in any wind-assisted propulsion is some way to reduce sail area. Preferably, we also want to be able to reduce sail area and still get some form of assisted propulsion from that sail. So that's one concept for wind-assisted propulsion. Some things that I noticed that were missing in that, um, they have a cantilever mast design. Uh, one of the biggest questions for any form of uh, sail propulsion is, how are you supporting your mast? You have a very large structure that is very tall and driving a huge amount of force through it. This can contribute most of the propulsion force of the ship. So given all of that force, how are you holding it up? How are you keeping this mast from falling over? A lot of people are going with what we call the cantilever design, where it's basically just a pole mounted to the deck. That becomes very, very heavy as you scale up to larger and larger structures. This is not just a little flagpole sticking up. This is going to be a major piece of structure that we have to critically design the rest of the ship's structure around to support that cantilever mast. That can add a lot of weight to your vessel. And so that's one of the critical questions to ask for wind-assisted propulsion is how much does this device weigh? But overall, it's got a lot of interesting concepts to it. And like a lot of these, the question is, let's see how it bears out, see what interest is developed. How on earth do they do it? Have you ever wondered how the large commercial ships do all these amazing things? DMS brings that same engineering to smaller operators. Take the chance to create a high performance ship. Stand out from your competitors. So check out the website and together let's build something awesome.